And I'm going to talk about the functional properties of green tea, and in particular about new evidence from human intervention studies. Green tea is a beverage rich in polyphenols and vitamins and minerals uh, made from Camellia sinensis, which is uh, the same plant that is used to make all other varieties of tea, including regular black tea. Uh, the difference being in the uh, processing, because to make the black tea, uh, tea leaves undergo a withering step, which results in full oxidation, and also oxidation and polymerization and degradation of most polyphenols. Whereas to make green tea, uh, tea leaves undergo a very uh, fast uh, steaming step with minimal or no oxidation. And so most uh, phenolics as well as vitamins and minerals are preserved. And then tea leaves can be either cut and dried to make the dry green tea to be used for tea bags and infusion, or uh, grinded into a very a uh, very fine powder that can be directly dissolved in water, and that would be green tea powder or matcha green tea. So as I said, green tea is very rich in polyphenols, especially catechins and especially uh, epigallocatechin pergallate, which has been widely investigated for its potential cancer preventive and cardiovascular preventive effects. We have an abundance of epidemiological and in vitro and animal studies about green tea. And they show that green tea has a strong antioxidant effect due to its phenolics, an anti-inflammatory effect, an epithelium protective effect. It is able to improve living profile, and it also has a fat-burning effect, which we will discuss later. But of course, all of these um, potential effects needs, need to be uh, tested in human trials, and we don't have many of them. But over the last few years, a few intervention trials were conducted on green tea. And today, I'm going to present to you five of those studies which I have selected so that they could cover all five of these potential properties that we have seen. The first study investigates oxidative stress, which is the most widely recognized uh, property of green tea. It is a randomized placebo-controlled crossover trial on 18 healthy subjects. You can see here the design. Uh, we have two different uh, treatments with two different varieties of green tea. So individuals uh, had to drink two cups a day of these uh, uh, two different varieties of green tea for four weeks, or uh, water as a control. And since this is a repeated measure design, all subjects had to undergo all three treatments. And of course, the uh, sequence of treatments was different for every subject. So we have a completely randomized design. Uh, and at the beginning, at the end of uh, every experimental period, we had a blood, blood collection for the common assay, which is a um, pretty reliable uh, technique to evaluate DNA damage, and in particular the uh, breaks in the DNA strand, which is proportional to overall DNA damage, uh, with these two protocols. The first one was to evaluate resistance of uh, DNA lymphocytes to next vivo induced oxidative stress. So basically, cells were challenge with hydrogen peroxide and the common assay was used to see how well could DNA resist to uh, oxidative stress. And then the second protocol was to evaluate the baseline endogenous level of DNA in blood lymphocytes. And that was after this treatment with the FTP enzymes that basically uh, recognize oxidized bases so that with the common assay we can both, uh, we can evaluate both the DNA breaks and uh, oxidative, uh, oxidized bases, which is the one of the main lesions uh, of uh, DNA when it's oxidized. As you can see here, this is the, uh, the results for the uh, first protocol. Um, the, you can see in the y-axis we have the percentage of DNA in tail. That is the result from the common assay. The higher the number, the, m the, the more damage in the DNA. And, and you can see that there is no variation with the control, which is water. And whereas you have a very strong, definite decrease in DNA damage following consumption of both varieties of green tea. And also with the second protocol, this is the endogenous level, so you can see the numbers are lower because here you do not, you do not have any induced stress, it's just the baseline. And again, you can see there's no variation with water and there is a significant decrease in uh, the level of DNA damage following the two uh, varieties of of green tea consumption. 
And here's another study about oxygen stress and Rinty, it's again a randomized placebo controlled trial. Uh, the number of subjects here is higher, it's 120 healthy but smokers, so they are already exposed to a, a certain a amount of oxidative stress and inflammation because uh, of uh, smoke. And um, so basically this allows to see if green tea can offer a protection uh, to smokers, sort of compensating the inflammatory and oxidative uh, damage due to uh, cigarette smoke. And also subjects were screened for uh, their GSTM1 and OGG1 genotypes. Those are two enzymes involved in uh, antioxidant protection and DNA repair. And they can be either present or not present in uh, uh, human subjects. So there are different polymorphisms. And this means that there are some individuals that are already more protected against DNA damage thanks to their genetic makeup. And we also know that these two genes can be induced by some bioactives present in food, such as um, sulfur-containing compounds from broccoli, but also potentially uh, polyphenols, and that's why the screening was interesting here. Uh, the experimental design was in here. Uh, it, it was a four months long study. They had to drink a huge amount. It's basically six cups a day of decaffeinated green tea. So it was decaffeinated, in this case, we want to, to make sure that we don't see any effect from caffeine, but just from the other compounds of green tea. There was a group with black tea, but we're not going to consider these results today. And then the control group was with water. Uh, urine was collected and oxygen stress was measured by evaluating, by evaluating the level of 8-hydroxy deoxyguanosine, uh, that is the major uh, oxidative lesion in DNA polymer oxidation. This is, again, it's an oxidized base and it's a biomarker of whole body oxidative stress. It's not as reliable as the common assay, but it's cheaper and faster and easier to do. And we can see when we uh, consider all subjects, there was a statistically significant decrease in uh, oxidative damage. And when we break the results for the uh, genotypes, we can see that uh, GSTM1 positive uh, individuals had a higher reduction in oxidative damage independent of their OGG1 genotype, um, while GSTM1 negative, uh, that means that they do not have the genes, so they cannot express this enzyme, uh, did not have a significant decrease. So um, we don't have any information about gene expression from this study, but we can hypothesize that uh, polyphenols from green tea can induce the expression or in any other way help the activity of GSTM1, and that's why we observe a higher uh, decrease in, uh, op in uh, oxidative stress. Because, of course, if the uh, gene is not there, you cannot induce its expression. It's just not there. Um, this study is a bit different. It's to evaluate the effect of green tea on lipid profile. It's a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover trial, so the best possible experimental design you could have with uh, a human trial. The only problem I saw with this study is that they didn't have any washout between treatments, but it was uh, on 33 subjects with dyslipidemia on a low-fat diet. But because of the crossover uh, repeated measure design, we can be sure that any uh, result we see is due to green tea and not to the low-fat diet. And in this case, they didn't have to drink a beverage, but a 250 milligram uh, uh, capsule of green tea dry extra, or a placebo for eight weeks. And blood was collected, and the lipid profile was evaluated. So triglyceride, total cholesterol, HDL cholesterol with enzymatic kits, LDL determined with the Fridual formula, and ApoB was also measured to see um, if there was a variation in the number of uh, VLDLs and LDLs. So there were no variations following the placebo. This means that even on a low-fat diet without green tea, there was no variation in any of these markers. But uh, with the green tea consumption, we had a significant decrease in total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol, but no variation for HDL, triglyceride, and no variation for ApoB. So uh, the, um, there, there was no uh, decrease in LDL number, but just in its uh, cholesterol content, which is good enough. Study number four was on endothelial function. It's a randomized placebo controlled trial on 30 healthy subjects, but again, smokers, so uh, prone to oxidative damage. 
and inflammation. And in this case, we are, uh, also uh, the dose response was evaluated, because we, and uh, it was evaluated the specific effect of catechin. So in this case, the control is not water, but it's green tea without uh, catechin, but with all other green tea components, including caffeine, vitamins, and minerals. They had to drink those two cups a day. Uh, group number two had the green tea with a low or medium dose of catechin, and group number three was a high dose of catechin. So two cups of green tea with 580 milligrams of catechin. We had measurements at time zero, after two hours, after one, and after two weeks, and plasma was collected, and the vasodilation response was uh, measured uh, with a forearm blood flow response to acetylcholine to evaluate endothelium-dependent vasodilation, which is basically uh, the variation in arterial elasticity and function due to uh, nitric oxide production. Also, endothelium independent vasodilation was evaluated with FBF response to sodium nitroprusside. Plasma nitric oxide was directly determined uh, with HPLC, and also plasma C reactive protein was evaluated as a biomarker of inflammatory status. So this, this is, these are the results for endothelium dependent vasodilation. We can see that in the no catechin and low catechin group, we had no variation, but we had a very significant and evident improvement in endothelial function uh, after the high catechin dose green tea consumption, already after two hours, and that then it was maintained after one and after two weeks. And of course, one and two weeks measurements were made at least 24 hours after the last green tea consumption to make sure that the effect was the, the long-term effect and not the, the pharmacokinetic effect. No variation whatsoever with endothelium independent vasodilation, so the improvement in endothelial function was due to probably due to nitric oxide release, and that this is confirmed by the direct measurement of nitric oxide. It's the same, no variation with the first two groups, and the significant increase after two weeks in nitric oxide levels for the high catechin group. C-reactive protein is, is a marker of subclinical chronic inflammation, and you can see um, that Oh, you can see that the baseline levels are actually a little bit high because the healthy subjects could be around 0.1, 0.2. Those were around 0.5, but that's because they smoke. And uh, again, we can see no variation with uh, the control and the low dose group, but a decrease in uh, su su baseline inflammation levels um, as measured by C-reactive protein after one and two weeks of high catechin dose green tea consumption. So this means that green tea consumption actually compensated the inflammatory effects of smoking. The last study is on body weight to see if it's true that uh, green tea consumption can help lose weight and fat. It's randomized a single controlled trial with 60 overweight subjects on a standardized diet, so no low calorie, but just standard, uh, and they had take three capsules of 250 milligrams dry green tea extract for uh, three months, or a placebo, and uh, with measurements made at time zero, one, two, and three months. Uh, body weight was measured, body composition, uh, fat and fat free mass, and resting energy expenditure with indirect calorimetry. Those are the, the results. We can see no variations in body weight for the control group, and a significant decrease after two months it's actually from 70 to 64, so about five kilograms uh, decrease in body weight after two months, and the decrease but less evident after three months. Same thing with body fat. No variation for the control group, and a significant decrease in body fat percentage after two months, and the decrease but not even significant after three months. And finally, this is resting energy expenditure, no variation for control, uh, increase, uh, very significant in uh, energy expenditure after two months, and again an increase, but less evident after three months. So we can see there is this pattern whereby for every parameter we have a better response after two months rather than after three months, and this, this was not a repeated measure study, so we, it could very well be a seasonal effect, but we could also hypothesize that uh, the body activates some sort of compensation um, mechanisms to uh, oppose weight loss after a long enough period of green tea consumption. 
Uh, in conclusion, we have seen that green tea definitely has a strong antioxidant power and genoprotective effects due to its polyphenols. It seems to improve lipid profile in uh, dyslipidemic subjects, lowering total cholesterol and LDL. It seems to improve endothelial function. It seems to have anti-inflammatory effect, and it seems to increase energy expenditure and help burn fat in overweight individuals. And this would all justify its definition as a functional food uh, uh, useful in protection against cancer and cardiovascular disease. But we have also seen that different individuals may respond differently based on their gen the genetic polymorphisms, such as GSTM1 and OGG1, that while the antioxidant effect was visible at low intakes with the normal one cup a day consumption, the effect on lipid profile, functional and therapy properties, and energy expenditure required higher intakes from several cups up to pharmacological doses. And that the effect on energy expenditure and fat loss was more evident after two months, but less evident after three months, suggesting a possible activation of compensatory mechanisms after long-term consumption of green tea. So definitely more research that is needed. It would be nice to have more studies to compare the effects of different doses, one cup, many cups, pharmacological doses. More studies to compare the effects of green tea beverage as such versus uh, green tea extract or catechins alone and more studies to evaluate variations in gene expression following green tea consumption, for example, starting with those two uh, genes that we have seen may be induced by green tea consumption. So this is it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.